Hey guys, I'm Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry. We got a little tutorial of these aces on fire, and they're gonna pop up right here, and you guys should be able to see that. And that's what we're gonna be painting up today. Anyway, let's go ahead and roll into this tutorial. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I'm gonna use some quarter inch automotive tape and lay a little border in there. And I wanted to point out what I just did there is you lay, if you're cutting tape like that, you lay the blade on it and then pull the tape back over the blade and it will cut the blade and keep you from cutting into the surface. And especially important if you're working on a soft surface, like I'm working on paper right here. So yeah, this is just a, or a synthetic paper with just some Autoborn sealer on it. So I'm gonna take some Wicked Detail Violet and I'm just gonna take a, a texture fence stencil and just lay some Wicked Detail Violet in the background to give it a little bit of look there. And then here is my um, sketch that I made and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the outline out I'm pointing out um, things inside that some people may want to but I'm probably just going to freehand in my A's and my you know spades diamonds hearts and clubs so that's exactly what I cut out right there and you know left it out like this and then I mixed up a you know medium coat gray it's uh, you know fairly light and I'm just gonna come in here and coat that in okay now I'm gonna put this piece in here and what I've done is I've cut these pieces off we start from our back piece pull this off All right we can pull that right out we got just a little bit of a light uh, a little bit of a dark gray in my cup and I'm gonna put a shadow in off that edge and I'll just pull each piece off and progressively starting from the back towards the front and having each one drop a shadow down upon the next one. We get to the last piece there, the, um, there'll be another cut and that's where the card is folded over. And so I'll pull that out and I'll just shade that in just a little bit. And that's the back side of the card. I didn't feel like putting the design in there. Didn't think it was Cut necessary. Out the spade, and the only thing you need to worry about is make sure if you do that, because that spade's underneath, make sure you cover that section up of where the where that's folded underneath, because you know, otherwise that's gonna wind up on top. And so now I'll just go ahead and cover in the black part of my spade, which is actually a brown color. Then I'm going to come along and I'm going to just create some rough edges off of the edge of the um, cards because, you know, if they were on fire, the edges would be burning and creating some burnt look on the edge. So you can do that with a texture stencil. You can freehand in. I did it both ways here just as an example. And so... As I might have mentioned, I'm just going to come in here and freehand in the A's and my little spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds, and all that stuff. Because um, first off, they don't need to be perfectly crisp because by the time I put some stuff around there, it doesn't go much matter. And secondly, I felt like I could, of course, you could always tape them off or you could make sure and draw them for first before you actually try to airbrush on top of them. All right, so if you're going to have fire on top of that you're coming over it what you want to do is put a base in just a little bit of smoky black um, in there just to give the fire a little something to pop off of there and you can see I'm cleaning up that under spray as well while I'm there and so yeah you want just to bring that smoky black over the top so that you can bring your fire in because the fire will pop a lot better off of the darker color the smoke than it will off of the darker almost white of the cards and then I'm you know make the edges a little bit rougher okay so now got some white and I will start just loosely Defining where my flames are going to be. You see, I'm even bringing that back over. Um, one good way, make sure you go really light when you're doing this until you know exactly where you're going with this. Um, you still want it light anyway, but uh, this gives you a chance to sketch. And if you mess up here, you can always go back over it with some darker colors.
Now I'm going to go over my white strokes with um, a scarlet red and cover that up. And uh, white allows the red to build up really quickly. But I'm also going to allow the red to go a little bit outside the white because that'll just create a little bit of a glow because it'll just create that reddish tone to the background color. I'll let the red drift off into the cards just a hair but you do want to be careful with that. You don't want to get too much coloring into the cards, but they would get influenced just a little bit by that red color, and you'll see me do that with the other colors as we go along as well. Um, like I said, and a little bit extra in the overspray, it will not hurt you here. All right, so I was looking around for my true fire stencils. I don't know where they're at. Didn't feel like cutting them one, so I grabbed the nearest thing I had that had some rounded shapes to it. So what I want to do I'm going to come underneath, right, and I'm going to just ghost off of that and then work myself very ghostly inside the blacks that I created. We don't want to put a whole lot of sharp stuff into it just yet. But when you do, get the edge and let it blend out just a little bit, give you that kind of fireish look. When you get these small ones like this, you really won't be doing very much hard edge work at all. But make sure if you do use a stencil, that you alternate the directions you're pulling that stencil from and you alternate the stencil, that you, the shape that you use regularly. So like now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna hit that hard edge in the inside. And let that ghost over there. So the important thing to keep in mind as you get to the top is the fire is coming from the be from behind the cards. So you want to make sure and not have that fire popping out from the middle of the card. In other words, if you do want to have fire coming out in the middle of the card, then you have to create a burn through mark on the card itself. As you look on the right hand side, that's kind of the shapes we're working in. Just throwing that, you know, snakeyish pattern. And then you come off of your stencil and just let it go out, let it drift out. So you create a hard edge where you hit your stencil line and then the overspray that drifts out, you allow that to happen. That gives you those wispy strokes. And it's gonna take a couple layers and that's one of the reasons that fire is so hard to get down is because it will really, as you're working on it, it can really look bad and still come out okay in the end. And especially if you're doing it with the non-candy way, which is the way I'm doing it in this particular case. Um, if you guys are interested in me doing it with candies, um, let me know and we can, we can do some fire with candies again sometime. So now I've got uh, Wicked Detail Orange. Um, you know, I'm using Wicked Detail on this particular painting. So I'm using Wicked Detail Orange, and I'm just using the straight orange out of the bottle. Um, there are other colors that can work better. But here's what I want to point out. Since I'm not working with candies, it's very important that I don't just come in here and flood fill. So I'm going in here and hitting my white, white layers and just making sure the candy's hitting the white layers mostly and letting it blend out into the red a little bit whereas if i was using candy if you wanted to you know when you coat with candy you can easily get those layers and you could go ahead and flood fill on top of this and everything would work out okay so i'm letting that orange also blend into the cards just a little bit but i'm not just flood filling this whole thing i'm mostly staying a little bit off the red. So I'm going in here with my white and I'm going to touch a few spots and what I want to do is I want to stay within that orange layer now mostly. Um, you know if you let it get outside of just a little bit it's okay but you just don't want to get you want to continuously move 
progressively inside the layer of cut last color that you worked in, getting tighter as you move along. Um, you know, I'm not going to get too worked up and being perfect, and that is one thing you just don't have to worry about with fire. And then, of course, once again, making sure that I stay coming from behind the cards. Notice how few places I'm actually using the shield, and even when I do use the shield, I'm pulling off the shield and moving with freehand strokes in addition. So now I've just got straight Wicked Detail Yellow, and I'm going to come in here and cover up like the other layers. I'm not going to just flood fill completely. I'm going to let it blend into the other colors a little bit, because especially since the yellow is so transparent. And then you'll see me, of course, bringing that into the cards to influence the coloring that the fire is creating on the cards. So... But we still, again, we don't just go crazy hog wild because, once again, we're not working with candies in this particular case, this particular time, and, you know, things will get muddy fast. If you feel that you got things a little bit too light, you can always come back in with your red and work from the outside gently in, and, of course, use your stencil to create a couple more hard edges inside that and bring that red right back into the edges. I just use that for a little glow on the outside. I'm going to just splatter a little bit of stipple on that just for some like embers loose and then of course I'm going to come in and once again staying within that last layer that we worked on just come in here and embellish a few hot spots those should be fairly crisp I didn't get them quite as crisp probably as I should have but you know we're overall we're going to be all right just a few hot spots here and there and don't go overboard I came in here with some very, very reduced yellow, and I will do some flood filling on this. And you could add transparent base to your yellow, um, which would thin it out even more. I did not use transparent base. I just thinned it out with reducer and came in over here. And like I said, I'm going to hit all of that and, you know, more or less flood fill until I get the desired effect I want. Now I'm going to unmask my little border masking that I put in there. And then I just, in this particular case, because this was just a little test piece for a demo, I'm going to take some spray can clear coat, clear coat that puppy, and this is what she is going to look like. And it brings that color out and that depth into that quickly. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this tutorial today. For those of you that are interested, I'll have links down in the description below for the materials and the equipment that I use today. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask them down in the comments below. And yeah, that's going to be pretty much a wrap. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell because I am putting out videos all the time. I'm in this for the long haul. And that's pretty much going to wrap us up today. If you like the video, thumbs up, share it, all that cool stuff. Y'all have a good one. We appreciate you. Bye.